So winter is easily the toughest chapter for a lot of people on Last of Us Part 1. And the reason for that is quite simply because you are playing as Ellie. Where'd you go? And although Ellie has some differences in relation to Joel that may or may not be considered advantageous, there are also, as you might imagine, a considerable number of downsides. So the first and most obvious one is the fact that she cannot really engage in melee combat. She can melee kill a stunned enemy, but she can't pick up a melee weapon. And if she tries to engage with her hands, she is going to be overwhelmed very fast and grabbed, whether that's by a human enemy or by an infected enemy. We'll talk about the rest in a second. First of all, just to mention this section of the deer, you only need to hit it twice. Gotcha. And then once you have, you can run to where you need to go. But because obviously this can be drawn out if you startle the deer and send it around, it's just worth being aware of these bundles of twigs and not, not stepping on them to startle the deer and trying to get it in two if you can. So the plus side for Ellie on this is that her arrows will kill the infected in one hit unless they're clickers every single time. And her rifle will kill humans infected and clickers in one hit as well and if she attacks from stealth that was a terrible shot thanks ellie uh, if she attacks from stealth she can do what joel can't which is an insta kill strike joel can only do these if the enemy is stunned if you if you attack from stealth he just starts punching like normal but ellie can actually do a strike because she has a knife but at the same time, the pistol, like other weapons, like Joel's pistol, will take three shots to kill a standard enemy and more to kill clickers. The bow will not kill a human in one if they see where she is. Got you. So we'll talk more about the differences in Ellie's gameplay as we kind of come to them and as they come into play. But one that comes into play immediately in this area and is going to be very, very beneficial is that the drops in terms of ammo will at the very least feel more generous than they might for Joel because you have to rely on ammo in order to make your kills. And as long as you are strategic with your ammo here, you will have more than enough to do what you need to. No matter what, we have to keep them out. So, as soon as David closes the door and you're in control, you want to be looking through this window, as there will be three runners who come from this angle. And then... Infected inside! And as you can see, although I missed a couple of shots with the bow there, even the partially drawn bow shot uh, helped. So just before David triggers the next sequence, just to mention again, there are three from there. You should be able to pick them off in one shot with the rifle each. And then there are three who come in, two from these windows here which David is now cov trying to cover with this uh, cabinet, and one who will come and start breaking down these boards. So you want to use an arrow, ideally, to stop that runner breaking down the boards and to get at least one of the ones who comes in. Um, the arrow can feel a lot more haphazard than the rifle in terms of aiming when they're coming right at you, but again, as long as you've not just immediately fired it the second you've started to draw it as long as there's a little bit of tension in there it will kill with the runner so don't worry too much about that and then once you have killed those you'll be wanting to go to this window uh do not bother helping david as the only things it does is trigger a grab scene with a clicker which doesn't stop these coming any closer it does just mean you have less time to arrange yourself to fight so we're gonna go to this window we're gonna ignore david's pleas for help, help 
Help me with this thing. And then we'll let him come in through the windows. We are once again going to focus. And there are two clickers that we want to get before they come in. Here, use this. Nice going, kid. And if we can do this all fast enough, we can manage the remaining space. If they are in, if any of them do get in, it can get chaotic very fast. But, I can say, the main thing you want to do in that sequence, which is crucial, is not let the clickers in. Because if the runners grab you, you'll lose health. If the clickers grab you, you're dead. That will take some practice and getting used to. Um, and again, we'll just get, take a moment here before the next section just to, to mention that will take some practice and get used to. If any of the runners do come in the room, don't panic too much. Just try and keep your distance from them. This may mean running in circles, but if any of the clickers get in the room or any of the clickers still alive when this happens, try as best you can to be aware of their movements specifically because... You're going to want to give yourself a little bit of breathing space and take aim in order to succeed there. Now, in the next area we're going to get dropped into, there are five clickers. Hey, kid, you all right? I'm fine. And we are not going to bother fighting any of them. What we're going to do instead, we're going to wait here for this clicker to go past. And then we are going to move extremely slowly. We may need to wait again because another clicker does come from the far. Again, I'm going to take this very slowly just to make the point. If the second clicker does come, don't worry too much. Just make sure you don't set anything off. You can wait around. This cycle will go indefinitely. You're just not going to want to move while they're too close to you. And then once that's done, you can walk as long as they're not in the middle of screaming as you're dropping down, should be fine. But again, you do not want to leave it as tight as I did there. You just want to head straight to this as soon as you've got an open path. And ideally make sure none of them are right by you. You do, but you can pick up the items that we saw there, the alcohol and rags. And then you'll want to pick up the brick. Again, there's a clicker down here with us. But there's only the one for the moment. The others will come down if they get alerted, so we're going to keep moving slowly. And then we can brick this one and climb up. Again, Ellie has that advantage of a single brick. Stun for a clicker allows it to kill the clicker. The other alternative would be to throw the brick and lure the clicker in a different direction. But honestly, unless you're not really slow, then the clickers that are there shouldn't pose any real risk to you.
as you can see, they're not going to climb the ladder. The only, the only risk is if you're in the middle of climbing the ladder and they're too close, that won't stop you being killed. But again, if you are very quiet and don't get spotted until the point that you throw the brick at the clicker, you should be fine. And then make sure you pick up that sharp, the blades there. And then get yourself boosted up. Quick. So again, just to reiterate, one advantage Ellie has over Joel in regards to clickers is that if you take a brick and throw it, you can go on the, you can kill the stun clicker instantly. Obviously, you can't do the three-hit brick kill that Joel does, but that will work with a brick or a bottle, and that will allow you to get out of there alive. The items you picked up now should allow you to craft no. Molotovs and oh. health, but we're not going to do that yet because we'll get more items, and we're going to do this once we can craft a lot more. So... The key is to not trigger the next combat sequence until we're ready. So once we're up here, we're going to sprint down this hallway. And we are going to go up here. Now, there is an optional conversation prompt, which triggers over these guys, which we do not want to trigger. So we're going to make sure if we're pressing triangle to pick things up, we are absolutely emphatically looking away from it. We're going to pick up that nail bomb. Alcohol, scissors. Again, as long as we've not triggered that, we can relatively leisurely go around, pick up what we need to pick up, including a brick there. Then we'll go here. There's nothing to pick up. But there will, if we need any ammo in the course of the fight later, ammo will potentially spawn here. And ammo will also potentially spawn along with health in the most dire situations here. The health isn't guaranteed, but the health can spawn there, so it's worth being aware of. And then what we want from this situation now is to craft a second Molotov, a health just in case and a second nail bomb now the molotov and nail bomb we are not going to you. use for the infected See anything? It's a dead end. and then obviously we took something. too long david does trigger the you? infected himself eventually but if we'd have triggered that conversation we would have had to be going into this a lot sooner so we're going to use the bow on the first three infected just because we got three Arrows there. And then... Two infected here. You hear that? They're on the roof. I know. And again. Don't panic too much at this point. Just pick up the ammo as it's dropped. Stand behind David if you need to. Use bricks in emergency. And then there is a point at which David will run into the main hall. This is the point at which we too want to be in here. And again, one thing we're going to try and do is make sure we've got a brick. Now, a lot of inputs just went wrong there, as you can see. We're going to not worry too much. We're going to get our rifle out. 
And we're going to withdraw to here. Now, as you can see, that all got a bit more chaotic than I intended, mainly because... Some actions went... Um, some actions went awry, but we're going to do that again just to kind of demonstrate what should have happened. Now, when we restart the encounter here... And you'll see I have everything that I crafted because we did that before the encounter started. So again. You hear that? They're on the roof. Focusing on this corridor first. Standing behind David. And again, as we saw there, the bloater is taken care of very quickly. The big guy's down. And then... We can focus on the last runner. So, again, just to reiterate, you will want to rely on the rifle for the majority of this, as it will one-hit kill everything except Check the blow tap. And then when the bloater comes, the two Molotovs and two nail bombs, plus a couple of additional bullets, will be enough to finish it off. Even if it can get chaotic, as it did the first time I tried this, because I went to throw 
And then for some reason, as I pressed, I must have accidentally pressed to go into my backpack, which is what happened, and I kind of got caught. If that happens to you, once you're in the second phase, you want to retreat to here, because this place will make it a lot easier for the first phase of this. And it also provides a bit of a safe haven for the second. Don't retreat there while the bloater is out, I must add, though. Because obviously if it charges at you, you've got nowhere to run. But in terms of escaping from the clickers and the runners, you can recuperate there. So all of that should allow you, as long as you keep calm and focus on picking up what ammo you have and making sure that you put it to use, you should end up being quite easily able to dispatch them. And as we saw there as well, we got extra ammo from here and here as they spawned in once we ran out in the fight. So before we go into the next combat areas, which is where we will face David's men, we want to make sure we have everything we picked up because we will carry that over. So we have one heal if we need it. We have seven bullets and for the rifle and two for the pistol, which should be more than enough for the next phase. Now, once you're on the horse, there's not much to do beyond making sure you mash square if any enemies jump onto the horse to try and dehorse you and dodging as best you can. You will take hits here, but they shouldn't affect your overall health for the next area. You should be. You should have full health restored in this next area once you're off the horse. So again, this first enemy. We did take a hit there. But again, as this is scripted, We shouldn't uh, be too worried. to make the point here trying to heal i can't because i have full health right so once we go out here there are going to be eight men in total we have seven bullets so we're going to go straight up here really and take out two of them straight away and then we are going to put ourselves in this room now we don't need to worry about anything coming from behind us just to go into photo in a second because the men who are down up the hill are not going to come from behind the entire encounter starts from here and it's all the enemies who have been spawned in front of us who we have to worry about so this is a handy little murder corridor and we can lean against the here to see when guys are coming up, we can you listen to the dialogue and use the subtitles. She's not here. But we want to have the gun aimed at the doorway where the man will appear before he reacts to us. Because otherwise, with a rifle, he will shoot us dead. Again, the sound of the person reacting tells if they're near or far, so you know whether you, need, you can use this position to look for them, or whether you need to be ready with your gun aimed. We do need to wait a little minute for the next guy to come up, but we've killed two there, and we killed two outside, so there are two more who will potentially show themselves, and we can see the next one 
in the window is just making his way up. Now, this guy has a shotgun, so again, this is instant death if he gets the first shot on us. Ah, uh, no, my mistake, he's got a pistol. But either way, we want to be here. Whoa! And that gives us enough time to react to him saying, whoa, and get the first shot off. Yeah, the guy with the shotgun, you can just about see in the window. But once he's dead, that will leave two enemies who stay by the bar exit, and you can see one of them poking his head up. So again, we want to be there the second we have sight of him, and that gives us a shotgun. And now we will neither he hear anything nor have anything on subtitles, so that allows us to go out, and now we can collect some things. So there's some alcohol here, and we'll also be able to collect an arrow from over there. Now, you can't see... The other enemy is in the distance as I did, and we shot one of the two. The other one... ...will sheepishly keep himself over there. You don't have to shoot that one there, you can wait till you get... ...much closer, because they're not going to really pose a threat to you as long as you kind of... ...don't come into their line of fire. Come in here with some health if you need it. And that gives us the free reign to take on the other guys. Again, you don't need to. You can wait till you're much further up to take out both of them, particularly if you're not as confident in your shots. But either way, their patterns will generally be one of them around this snack bar and the other one at the place where you need to go in order to progress. And if you need to fight them and get drawn in, there are some, there's more cover down here. There's throwable brick. So there is a bit of an arena, as you can see, to move around in. But because we use that murder corridor, we don't really need to use the majority of it. So we just grab that rag. That alcohol and see if either of the guys has dropped anything gives us some pistol bullets now pistol bullets are probably the least helpful out of all of the bullet combinations but the game will sometimes give you them rather than rifle bullets so use whatever you have available to you 
Now in the next area we'll have an initial three enemies with a potential two more who can be triggered if you set off an alert or if you try and go around the back. So there are multiple ways that you can do this next encounter. I'm going to try and show a couple if I can. So no matter what, it's worth, as you get here, press L3 to have the camera point you in the direction we need to go just so it doesn't try and do that during the combat because that, that will be, as you can imagine, very unhelpful. Now, our goal here is to get inside this lodge because that's where our next, where we'll be captured by David to trigger the next scene. Now, there are two ways in. One is to climb up and through this hole here, which is the closest, but most obviously in sight of the enemies as they come from around the corner. The other is to go around the back and you can either pull a dumpster to climb into it up a hole or pull the dumpster out of the way and climb into the hole behind it um that's more out of the way if you can escape the enemies but there are two extras that spawn from there after the initial three come so there's a variety of ways of doing that Now that way, as you saw, is fraught with risk, as it can lead to getting very low health. We can heal here, which means it's not as much of an issue. And then, once we go through here, because we too have two shotgun shots, we can come down here. Get these two guys and then come down here. Now we may have to wait for a minute for the guy at the window to lose us just because the game won't let us out otherwise. But we're not going to be followed by any of them. So we can just kind of sneak around a bit. And then that will allow us to go through. Cover the ground. Make sure she's not hiding somewhere over here. Now, as you saw that time, having them see you earlier and run to where they thought you were, but you're already past. So we triggered them before we got to the uh, quad bike, and then we kind of crawled our way past so that they didn't see us further. And then once the initial two were past us, we were able to run. And by the time the third guy spotted us, we had no real issues, and again, we've still got two shotgun shells. Which allows us to go here. The other alternative to this is fighting everyone, which can be relatively straightforward or can be fraught with risks, depending on both the position that you're in and what ammunition you have. We're going to stay in stealth for as long as we can. Cover the ground. Make sure she's not hiding somewhere over here.
trying to toy with me. Now, because we've not gone loud yet, the other two will continue on a relatively predictable path. So, we've got the one there. And we can run in. Again, we can choose to fight them all if we want. But if we get, if we get a way through, it's best to take it especially if you can conserve those two shotgun shells for this eventuality And as Joel, in this lower area, we can get three revolver bullets before we head on up. Now, if you remember what I said at the university, that it's good to have two health kits here. One as a reserve if you take any damage, but the other we are going to use immediately because we are not at full health. Even though the controller says green, we're going to heal all the way up. Because we don't want that little bit of damage to be the difference between life and death. And then... We're going to make sure we've got... Our best guns loaded. For this next area. Now... This sequence involves a bunch of guys with weapons hey! that can one-hit kill you, including shotguns, but it also involves a kind of scripted running away from them. So, the first thing you want to do here is kill two of them as quick as you can, which is why I tend to go right in the middle. And use the revolver's one hit kill to get two of them immediately. As you hear them say then, they, you know, quick, don't let them get you. That forces them all to retreat. So we'll take our bullets. And then they will have retreated behind this fence here. So then we simply want to hop up here, stay crouched. And we kind of... Pop up and shoot. And that should give us enough space to be able to sneak into this next area. Now, there's a guy with a rifle over there. And there's a melee guy still hiding behind here. So despite the fact that they said keep running. And that on lower difficulties they will run away. Here because it's grounded they will stay. So he will kill us if he gets the chance. And as we notice, he's got his aim right on us. So 
So again, we want to, we do not want to give him the chance to get a shot off. there because he's not looking at us now even if they think they know where you are they will hesitate after a little while you just have to be patient so again from here as you can see when i was shooting i stayed here i did not get to here because i would be very visible to all of them you stay right where you just climb up and that allows you to then Again, pop up, shoot, down. And that same principle of popping up and shooting and immediately dropping aim the second the shot goes off. Allows you to get off the quick shots here. And we didn't want to get drawn into a fist fight with the guy who was coming towards us. Here, which is why we dropped him quick, because that would have given him ample time from here as we were fighting to just aim and shoot and probably score a one-hit kill. This section is arguably the hardest part of Ellie's entire part of the game. And I find it easier rather than to try and sneak through, to fight through, specifically because that at least allows you some control over what happens next. So I tend to get a throwable there. And we can get a second health kit in this desk. And there's another throwable right by us. And the enemies are only going to come in through this door. Even though there's a gap in the little corridor to the left, it's too low and they won't crawl through it. So what we're going to do here... This messed up, then we could have a town is essentially put his leadership up to a vote. Kill them as they come to us. Sometimes that will trigger an alert and draw more and over, sometimes it won't. So be aware that you may have to move faster than sometimes than others, but Essentially, that allows us to grab a gun and a brick. And now a second guy is going to come along. He's going to see the body. Oh, this fucking kid is going to pay. Come on, let's keep searching. Over here. And again, grab a th the, the bottle that's just by the corner of that door. They will only come through that door. If we need to, we can go through the window behind us. And we have two bullets if we need to. <coughs> As well as still having a bottle. And again, that was quite fast there, as you can see. But as long as you don't move into the path of the enemy when they're not stunned, you're generally going to be okay. And a good indication of once you've killed them all is that uh, 
Ellie will put the gun away for after a little while rather than keep it open. We also can't do a full combat sprint. We can only jog. So that gives us a clue to tell us that all of the five enemies in this area are dead. There are three enemies in the next area. And if you've got at least one bullet, then you can re deal with the first one of them simply by waiting until he comes up here. And then shooting him as so. This will then draw the second here. And should give you a bullet for the third. If that's the case, jump behind this cover. And again, you can see, you can very vaguely see the outline of him around where my dot is. Which should allow you to get off a shot. Which again comes back to the advantage of the revolver being a one-shot kill on grounded. If you can't get that shot off on him, then the other thing to do would be to retreat back down here and around, obviously in a kind of stealthy position, as this would allow you to get closer to him. <laughs> and you'll be able to see his position more clearly from here. And then you could throw by pressing square to switch shoulders and hit him that way. Or if you were lucky with the lock on and it did lock on before then, you could also do that as your way to get past him. Either way, that takes care of all the three enemies in that area. And then we have four more to deal with in this area. Now what I tend to do is wait for the first guy to come. Now the other guy was right on me, so... That's more close quarters than I usually like. But... All else fails, we can retreat back to here, where there is another bottle. We can also do this between kills if you prefer, if you want to get a shot off on one. Then that, although be aware that this will kind of reset the position of any surviving humans. Because their area of patrol does not include that so they won't be inclined to follow you as you can kind of tell from the fact that ellie put the bottle away in that area and then picked it back up once we were back over here so what this will have done shoved the last guy outside now he may or may not choose to come back in but we can kind of use 
use that to our advantage and either lure him out or give ourselves a clear signal that he's fine to move. As we saw there, no reaction. So we can move. And again, if there's even one of them left, I like to generally hug this kind of left side. They'll see you through the blizzard before your eyes can kind of make them out as well. Be aware of that. wherever the game has put our guy this time it doesn't seem to be anywhere that will bother us so we can move on relatively unscathed but yeah as I said there's if you don't feel safe about going in and fighting them and reacting as quickly as I did you can shoot up bottle one immediately run back outside to where I took the second bottle regather your thoughts and then if they choose to follow you far enough, you can attack them. If they choose not to follow you, you can edge your way back in and kind of gauge what to do next and play it a bit more safe. Either way, the approach is generally the same, using whatever bullets they've dropped to get one hit kills and the bottle throw and stab combination on any that you can't shoot. Now, you'll notice as we jump in here that we have a bottle still, and one, there is a trick that speedrunners use in order to keep the bottle, which effectively involves picking up a health kit and having the health kit equipped at the point which where they go to the door, and then the bottle is there in their inventory when they need it for the third phase of the fight. Despite trying this multiple times, I've never actually had this to work for me. Which leads me to believe that there's more to it than they're saying. So perhaps it'll only work if you manage to get through without picking up a gun. I don't know. Either way, I've never had that work for me. So we're going to do this without a bottle. But there are three distinct phases to this fight. Which we're going to go through a couple of times now. It's now right. as soon as we get control of Zelly, we are going to move to the right. To and around... And as you can see, the bottle has dematerialized. Now we want to make sure he's past this point. And then we can come no, up you're not and stab him. And it is literally that simple, that, that first one of just going in a loop around. As long as you get the pace right, that should be fine. With the second one, you want to be holding to the left. If you hit him here, in this exact spot, then you want to be going to the left. And that will allow him to turn around. And then you want to run this way. Notice we stopped running relatively early. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Right, that was quite fast, so we'll do that all again just to show you. There are essentially three loops that you do on David here. So, just to kind of break it down whilst we've not got him bothering us, you start off here, and this timing doesn't quite work if you do a restart checkpoint. This only really works from the start of the encounter, so as soon as you get control, 
You are going this way. Ellie will move faster in the actual encounter. You go all the way round. Again, you will stay crouching. Let him pass the threshold there. Move up. And then press triangle. Like spam triangle as you're coming towards him. That will be the your first hit will be here. And then that will trigger you to be thrown here. As he pulls his machete out. And you will immediately go to the left and round the corner. And you can stop right there because David will stop here and turn around and be walking this way. And that allows you to come up behind him. And again, spamming triangle, get another hit. And then once he's done that, you'll want to run this way round. Past the tables and then about here, duck down and move. And carry on moving to about here. By the time you're here, he should be should show himself. And then stay out of his sight. Again, circling around as necessary. And as long as you're not hit by any randomness, then by the time he comes up here, you should be unseen around here, which should allow you to follow him round to where he is taking his next position here, and you can just get the drop on him that way. Let's do all of that in one go. Easy to track. How did you do it? That's all right. Nowhere to go. You want out? You're gonna have to come get these keys. No, you're not infected. That was good, kid. It's gonna be all right. You know, you keep surprising me. That a girl. And as you see, there's a slight variation, but essentially the overall pattern is the same as long as you manage to, once you are in the kitchen area, stay hidden from him. And that's pretty much it. Um, the only other thing to say in that area is that if you're not able to do that in stage three, it can become very tough very fast, particularly if you run too far away or lose track of where David is, because trying to sneak up on him at that point then becomes a lot more tricky especially without listen mode as you won't have it when grounded and his behavior can be quite erratic he can see you from all manner of weird angles so try and do it that way if you are able to just to make your own life easier and then with joel here we have two guys who'll be on top of Vans in the corner of the level, and then we'll have up to five guys, I think, who come out searching, and we want to try and take them out before we take out. Now, again, my loadout was lucky enough that I was able to take out three of them all in one go. Including, I think, one with a shotgun. Go check over there. But there's one with a shotgun and I think one with a rifle, so we need to be aware of that. Over there. And take them out as soon as we're able to. And again, when I want to lose them, I'm moving at a sprint. 
and then kind of after a certain point I just crouch down and carry on crouch walking So there are all sorts of variations, but if you're able to take out a group of them rapidly, the best. And if you're able to kind of just say in their positions from their talking. Now, note that the two who are on top of the trucks will still keep saying, do you see him? He's not over here, even though they're not actively searching because they can't move anywhere. But one of the reasons why we want everyone in this area dead is because it means the three in the next area will be passive rather than aggressive. So we will want everyone, including the two on the rooftops, dead. Now there is our guy with the iron pipe. From here, it's very difficult to get a clear idea of exactly where the other two guys are to be able to pop, pick them off. So you will have to get closer. But as they have rifles, that does pose a risk. And we can see the shadow of one of them there. So again, there's no clear single strat for this. It depends on your loadout, but I find that keeping moving around minimizes the risk of any of them getting the drop on you. And ideally taking out the ones with guns first, particularly the ones with long guns, minimizes the risk of getting one-shotted, which can be extremely frustrating in the circumstances. And we can see that guy's got a soft alert. He can see vaguely where we are. But we can also see him now. So we're going to kind of wait till he's looking away-ish. And that puts him dead. This gives us space. stock up we don't have a shift for this shift door so that's nothing to worry about there won't really be much else in the hotel rooms so your main supply potential will be in the guys here who as you can see So there were five in total, uh, two with melee weapons, three with guns, but now that they're all dead, and again, if for any reason you're not able to pick off any of the melee, 
You will have them come around from all different angles. It's going to make it a lot trickier. There's not really any one position you can lure them from without making yourself extremely vulnerable. So you have to kind of use the space. But be aware, don't try and use the blizzard itself as cover because that will work against you. It won't really work against them. They'll, on grounded, they'll see as if it was a clear day. Well, however you approach it, once they're all dead, that gives you the all clear to come here. And there will be three more. One of whom will be coming kind of vaguely in our direction. But not with any aggression at all, so we don't have to worry about that. And with the other one, we just kind of stay behind the car. Until we're out here. He may see us, and at that point we might need to sprint, but otherwise we can just casually kind of meander past them. And once we're here, we're safe. Like I say, they're a lot more dangerous if you've not killed everyone in the first area. And then once you're through here, as Ellie and crawling on the floor, be aware that you can still technically die if you don't crawl forward. And I have had it where the game hasn't fully recognized my input and that has happened on permadeath so if there's any doubt at all then you do get half a second's grace so wait until you're in this view and then immediately press forward and again if that if it doesn't look like she's moving stop and press forward a second time but either way you should move as so I knew you had hard you know it's okay to give up no and again shame. just in case it doesn't recognize if you hold forward the whole time let go of forward until you're back in this position just not your style is camera it? angle wise and then you can uh, Follow through to the remainder. Fuck you. This should be fairly straightforward and obvious, but I mentioned it just because I have had a go wrong on permadeath and the game not recognizing your inputs because you've held the button down from before you had control is an occasional problem. And bye bye, David. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. Like the video that just popped up, which YouTube thinks you should watch next. This is a Patreon and member supported channel, so if you want to become a member and unlock custom badges and emojis, early access to my videos, and your name in the credits, then click the join button below. Thanks very much for watching, and see you next time. I won't let you take her.